2020 was a year like no other in many aspects. Today, we're going to take a look back at the year that was through the lens of mass timber. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Two Minute Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean, and today we're going to take a look back at the year that was 2020 through the lens of mass timber. Specifically, we're going to look at my top 10 trends, items, happenings in the world of mass timber. Now, a couple of disclaimers here. These are purely my personal opinions and views. I'm not going to do this through a forecast of things to come or give you a lot of data as to what occurred. But these do represent things that I'm seeing on a daily basis when it comes to mass timber projects, mass timber design, and mass timber construction. All right, so with those disclaimers out of the way, let's jump right into it. Number one on my list is the start of a tall timber era. Now, many of this is tied to the 2021 International Building Code. You may be familiar with the fact that this new version of the Building Code introduces three new construction types, types 4A, 4B, and 4C. These allow mass timber structures to be built up to 18 stories, where previously mass timber could only be built up to six stories. So a huge step forward. Now, these changes had been voted on and approved in previous years, but 20 2020 saw the actual release of the document, which can be purchased now. So this is available and many jurisdictions are looking to evaluate tall mass timber projects that are being proposed, citing the new provisions located in the 2021 IBC. Additionally, several tall mass timber projects are currently under construction. The intro project in Cleveland is a nine story structure, eight stories of mass timber over a one story concrete podium. This is going to be an apartment structure plus some mixed use. This is currently under construction in Cleveland. The first timber columns were actually erected just a few weeks ago in mid December. And the other project that's currently under construction for tall mass timber is the Ascent Tower in Milwaukee. When completed, this project will actually be the tallest mass timber hybrid structure in the world, standing 25 stories and 284 feet. It's 19 stories of, of mass timber over six stories of concrete parking garage. All right, number two on my list is growth of the supply chain. And again, this is not something new to 2020. We've seen growth through previous years, but we did see a very significant growth in the mass timber supply chain in 2020. For example, several North American mass timber suppliers expanded with new facilities or new capabilities in 2020, either opening new plants elsewhere or increasing the capacity of their current plants. We also saw several new mass timber suppliers come online in the North American market and achieve certification for building grade products. And additionally, we also saw several international mass timber suppliers achieve North American certifications to again be able to code compliantly provide mass timber elements for projects here in North America. Number three on my list is wider spread adoption of mass timber. And a lot of this is tied to tall mass timber, but it's really mass timber in general. For example, I mentioned the 2021 IBC in point number one on the list and those new code provisions for tall mass timber structures. Well, several jurisdictions actually preemptively adopted those tall mass timber provisions. Just a few days before the end of 2019, the city of Denver adopted tall mass timber code provisions for the city. Also in 2020, we saw the state of Utah and the state of California adopt tall mass timber code provisions. The state of Georgia is also looking to do something similar. So wider spread adoption in that sense. Also, there are new provisions in code reference standards. For example, the American Wood Council's special design provisions for wind and seismic published towards the end of 2020 for the first time provided code recognized prescriptive guidelines for seismic design of CLT shear walls and CLT diaphragm. Frames. Number four on the list is an increase in use of mass timber in multifamily and hospitality projects. Projects such as the Cirrus Apartments in Denver, the Postmark Apartments in Shoreline, Washington, uh, Intro we mentioned earlier, Ascent, multifamily projects, hospitality, the Magdalena Hotel in Austin, Texas, uh, condo building in Lost Rabbit. There are a number of other projects right now that are in the works, um, some tending to be more of the taller mass timber projects, but definitely an increase in use in mass timber in multifamily and hospitality projects. Number five has to deal with hybrid construction. Mass timber has generally been used in a hybrid style where it's combined with other elements, other systems, such as a concrete core, structural steel frame, and that trend has definitely continued in 2020. We've seen a number of projects use, say, structural steel beams and columns with CLT floor panels. On the other end of the spectrum, we've also seen an increase in the use of CLT shaft walls in otherwise light frame wood buildings. 
Number six on the list has to deal with sustainability. Now, sustainability is not a new concept. It's not a new focus for building designers and developers, but I have seen an increased interest and focus on sustainability of all aspects of a structure from cradle to gate, dealing with where do these building materials come from? What does it take to produce these building materials? Of course, Mass Timber really shines in that category. And certainly in 2020, we saw a focus and an increase in the sustainability aspects of Mass Timber construction, both the tools used to measure that and the means by which Mass Timber is able to achieve on a lot of these sustainability objectives. And number seven on the list really deals with occupant comfort, occupant well-being. I think the impacts of COVID that we've seen this year with people spending a lot more time indoors has really shined the light on the need to focus on the impacts of really the structure, the building materials, the finishes, how all of those things impact the well-being of the occupants within a building. Good ventilation systems, of course, are key, but also what effect, what impact do the finishes and structural materials have? Due to this, we've seen new research start into what are the impacts of an exposed wood finish on an indoor environment? How can that potentially improve the occupant well-being? And what role does COVID have to play in all of this? Number eight is something I'll generalize as growing pains. You know, I think this is to be expected with any industry that's growing such as mass timber is, you know, new challenges and new hurdles are going to be faced. It's not to say there aren't solutions for those. Solutions are certainly coming. One thing that comes to mind here is insurance. I think this is something that we definitely saw come to the forefront in 2020 was an increase in some of the challenges associated with insurance for mass timber projects, both builder's risk during construction and then property asset insurance after the building is occupied. Now, I think one of the positive benefits coming out of these growing pains is new conversations, new discussion that's happening because of these challenges and hurdles. For example, just in the month of December alone, I probably had about a dozen conversations with insurance brokers, agents, underwriters, with developers, with contractors, with building designers, with facilities people, all around this topic of mass timber insurance. And I think what that's doing is getting a collective pool of knowledge together to be able to help solve this issue going forward. I think it's also important to note that the insurance industry right now is very turbulent by factors having nothing to do with mass timber, just because of all of what's been going on in 2020. Number nine on my list is contractors. You know, I think personally that contractors are the bridge, the key between a well thought out design of a mass timber structure and a well executed fabrication and supply of a mass timber structure. Now the contractors are very crucial in terms of early on developing very well thought out cost estimates to make sure that the cost numbers are being tracked properly throughout a mass timber project, but they're also crucial in the design aspects, really functioning both helping influence the design, making sure it's constructible and the speed of construction can keep up with mass timbers potential, but then also working on the back end with suppliers and helping make sure that all of the things are coordinated, such as MEP penetrations, well thought out connections. So I think in 2020, we really saw contractors step up in this category. Seeing a number of contractors really dive in with both feet and want to understand mass timber, get well educated on mass timber. We're even seeing some contractors take on in-house fabrication capabilities to really further that master builder approach to mass timber projects. The last item on my list for 2020 in mass timber is that we're seeing that the business model works. From a financial perspective, we've seen a number of developers come forward and say that they have plans to not only do their current mass timber project, but to replicate that in multiple cities around the country. Of course, going back a few years, we saw this with Heinz in their T3 series of projects. Of course, we have Minneapolis and Atlanta constructed now, but they've also announced plans to do several others throughout North America, but that's not it. We've also seen other developers who are currently doing a mass timber project who have come forward in 2020 and said that they have plans to replicate mass timber success in other parts of the country due to the success they're finding financially and otherwise through their current mass timber projects. Well, 2020 has been quite the year for the mass timber industry and really the construction industry in general. I hope that you enjoyed this year in review video. Please let me know down in the comments if there are other topics you'd like to see discussed in the videos going forward. Also, let me know what were some of the top things on your radar for mass timber in 2020. What were the trends that you were seeing? Thanks so much for watching today's video. As always, we'll see you back here next week.